I'm not a network expert, and that lack of knowledge really showed in some previous videos where I was showing off some TP-Link hardware versus some Ubiquiti hardware, and thankfully fellow YouTuber Brad from Shiny Tech Things, subscribe to his channel by the way, noticed this lack of knowledge and has offered to teach me a couple of things on how to improve my home Wi-Fi networking speeds. And so, Brad, take us away and show me what I can do to improve my home network. Hey Stefano, I'm going to break it down to just a couple of things to check out first. If you live in a populated area, the chances are you're not going to be able to use the 40 megahertz width on the 2.4 gigahertz uh, Wi-Fi spectrum. So go ahead and fire up any network analyzer program that can show you visually what your environments look like. While looking at the 2.4 gigahertz band, it looks like channels 1 and 11 are heavily underutilized, while channel 6 is overly saturated with other devices. Now on the 5 gigahertz side, it looks like only channel 44 is being used, so we have plenty of other channels to choose from on there. We're gonna have to walk around and talk to our neighbors and introduce yourself to anybody that you don't know already who is currently using any channels other than 1, 6, and 11 on the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum and have them change it to the proper channels that don't overlap. You'll want to split the 2.4 gigahertz and 5 gigahertz into separate SSIDs. This is because generally speaking, 2.4 gigahertz can travel further through objects than 5 gigahertz can. By splitting into separate SSIDs, then you shouldn't have the problem where a particular device might be switching back and forth between 5 gigahertz and 2.4 gigahertz because of a little bit of a variation in the signal. So for example, with a security camera, if you only have a single SSID, then when you're connected to it, you're letting your Wi-Fi hardware go ahead and determine uh, which band it's going to be using, whether it's 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. And what can happen is it can switch back and forth and end up uh, dropping communication. So if it is a cloud enabled camera, then the footage wouldn't go up to the cloud necessarily, or there might be some drops in the footage. Now, Stefano, you already have your access point in the center of your home, which is ideal. Uh, definitely explain this to your neighbors that moving their routers or access points can help reduce the probability of the signal from broadcasting kind of lopsided over to other neighbors homes, which is a security risk. Wow, thanks Brad, that was very insightful. So what are the first changes that we should go ahead and make to our 2.4 gigahertz band and our five gigahertz band based off your analysis of my home Wi-Fi network? Go ahead and set 2.4 gigahertz to 20 megahertz width on either channel one, six or 11, whichever has the least amount of competing traffic. Now determine what is the furthest device from the access point and look at its signal strength and connected link speed. After doing that, go ahead and reduce the transmission power of the 2.4 gigahertz radio. And there's no point in blasting it so that your neighbors get interference if they're on the same channel. But ideally you want to stagger channels one, six and 11, but you'll need to look at your Wi-Fi analyzer at each location and see what it looks like in the air. Now we need to look at what the five gigahertz looks like and then define the channel width accordingly, but you need to know a few things first. Now, you might want to avoid what's called a DFS channel. And what it does is by design, it will shut off from like one to 10 minutes, uh, whatever the access point or router detects as a radar signal from airplanes miles away in the sky. Ubiquity Unify will actually log this if you're using uh, DFS whenever it detects radar. Now you might want to go ahead and check out NetBees. I'll go ahead and provide this link for you as well to check out on DFS channels so you can learn more about that. Now I've got a question for you. First question is, do you regularly transfer large files over Wi-Fi? If the answer is no, then 20 to 40 megahertz channel width is more than enough for your needs. If you're using Wi-Fi calling and have call quality issues, try switching to the 2.4 gigahertz spectrum or reducing the channel width on your five gigahertz radio. Now, in my opinion, the largest mostly stable width would be up to 80 megahertz. Well, that's because of more potential interference, right? Yes, that's actually correct. Also, not all devices support going as wide as your router or access point. So it's like having a Prius on the Autobahn. The roads support faster speeds than the car driving on it. Going to 160 megahertz width, which may work, however, falls under DFS channels can also cause more problems than what it's worth. Now that you have it all dialed in, look at the signal strength 
of the furthest devices on the 5 GHz SSID and adjust the power and walk around and verify that it's not bleeding over to your neighbors, causing them interference. And one last quick thing is that you might notice that some devices, especially older ones, might never show the 5 GHz SSID. And that's because it might only support 2.4 GHz, especially if it's like a older laptop or a cheap laptop. So let me know after doing the various tests on the different speeds that you are able to achieve in your livable areas that live up to your Wi-Fi speed expectations. So go ahead and test the speeds around your property and let me know what kind of speeds you're getting after the adjustments, especially after you go ahead and speak with your neighbors and have them adjust their radios as well. And one other thing is once you get to know your neighbors and you explain this to them as well or show them this video, once everybody dials down their broadcast strength and you don't get nearly as much overlap, you'll notice that just the quality of your wireless connections in general are going to be much more stable, not just for you, but for your neighbors as well. Wow, Brad, that was a lot to take in, but I think I understand the gist of it. So I'm gonna go ahead and change my 2.4 gigahertz band uh, from channel six to channel one and leave it at 20 megahertz because I think that is about right from what you were saying. And while we do that change, I'm also gonna go ahead and change my five gigahertz band from channel 44 to 52, but then also adjust the channel width to 80 megahertz because I do actually have sometimes pretty significant uh, data transfers from my laptop to my server. Now I'm gonna spare you guys, me going around the house and doing a bunch of speed tests and I'm gonna do very poor averages here. Uh, so take my speeds with a grain of salt, but I think once we lock this in, we should see somewhat of an increase, especially on the five gigahertz band. All right, I think those changes are set to take. Um, so now I'm gonna go ahead and do that, the speed tests. Be right back. Okay, the speed tests are complete and this is basically what I saw. So on the 2.4 gigahertz band while using channel six previously, I was getting anywhere between 20 to 30 megabits per second down and then also anywhere between 60 to 90 megabits per second up depending on how far away I was from my access point. But then once switching to channel one, while not a significant bump in speeds, I was seeing about 50 to 60 megabits per second down and about 100 megabits per second up. Not bad. Now, the real big changes were on the five gigahertz band, where previously on channel 44, I was seeing about 330 megabits per second down or in that neighborhood of 300 megabits per second down and anywhere between 169 megabits per second up and 180 megabits per second up. So not terrible, but not great. However, once we switched from a 40 megahertz band to an 80 megahertz band and changed to channel 52, we saw some pretty significant gains in that area. So while just doing some generic speed tests with Wi-Fi Man, I was getting anywhere between 669 down and um, 400 and 420 up. So that's a pretty big improvement. Now those numbers did jump around a lot, especially as I moved further away, like into the corners of the house, but I'm never gonna be working over there anyway with my laptop. I'm generally gonna be here in the office, which is right down the hall from my wireless access point or in the living room, which is basically in the same space as the wireless access point itself. So I think that's a pretty significant gain. And man, I gotta tell you, Brad, I'm really, I really appreciate you uh, giving me all that insight and saving me from having to do all the digging and diving on or research on my own. So. Very much appreciated there, sir. Well, all right. Thank you so much, Brad, for teaching me all of these things and giving me this knowledge that I can now carry forward when I do future deployments or help people with their Wi-Fi networks. And yeah, man, I really appreciate it so much. Hey, not a problem. I'm really glad to be able to help you guys out. Just remember to follow these simple steps whenever setting up your Wi-Fi to be able to achieve better speeds and reliability for your home or business. Cool. All right. Well, thanks, guys. Thank you so much. Don't forget to get over to his channel to like and subscribe. And we will see all of you next time. Cheers.